following podcast is being brought to you by the Defy Life Podcast Network. Maybe we can still heal you. Why? So you can just lock me up? No. Mm-hmm. Just bury me in the ocean with my ancestors that jumped from the ships. Cause they knew death was better than bondage. Oh, you think darkness is your ally? You merely adopted the dark. I was born in it, molded by it. I didn't see the light until I was already a man. By then, it was nothing to me but blind. <laughs> the shadows betray you because they belong to me. In the hell do you think you are? Okay, it's not working out. I'm gonna need the suit back. For how long? Forever. Yeah. Yeah, that's no, no, works. no, please, please, please. Let's have it. You don't understand. This, this is all I have. I'm nothing without this suit. If you're nothing without this suit, then you shouldn't have it, okay? So, Oz, um, this is the uh, first time we're actually going to be recording a uh, show together. Me personally, I think it's a really bad idea. Um, what are your thoughts on it? I think it's a horrible idea, um, but we're going to power through it. Just knowing that my wisdom and my tactician abilities are going to just come power through. Um, Once again, mighty Uncle Oz has to lead the caravan through. But we will do it. We will shepherd the storm for the purpose of (laughs) taking a knee for Marvel versus DC. This was his idea. It was a terrible idea. It was a terrible idea. <laughs> it's really bad. It's, it's not, bad. And it's not terrible that we're recording together. It's terrible because he didn't plan any of this out. He didn't set anything up for us. There's nowhere for us to record. And also it's terrible because I And then he the, wanted to share mics and share head. Like, he wants to share everything. Like, this is not working. Uh, regular Scott did have to really convince me not to share headphones. I, I in, in hindsight, that was a bad idea. Um... But I will also have to say that uh, we were supposed to start, just to be in the interest of full disclosure, <laughs> we were supposed to start this show two hours ago. <laughs> Regular Scott had some complications. <laughs> I may have had some complications induced by alcohol. <laughs> and once again, to our listeners, alcohol, <laughs> no matter how stressed you are in the morning time, is probably not the best idea. So, um, as I said... Um, through my leadership, we were going to power through. And if I happen to fall asleep, don't take this personally. It's just, um, yeah, it's hell. V's isn't here because he's taking a shower. Yeah, yeah V said he had to um, take a shower. And even if he was here, apparently, from the last two episodes, um, this V said he took about two showers. <laughs> so he's averaging two showers per episode. We miss V's. <laughs> Two showers. For, <laughs> well, no, he only takes showers when you rain. Oh, you know what? Actually, that's not even being fair to V's. V said, to be clear, he works out. Then he takes his shower in the during, during our podcast. So that that's good because he gets a full body workout and you know earn your sweat. <laughs> so yeah, we're gonna power through this, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um. So today we're gonna talk about uh pretty much the uh, the merger. Uh, Sony, Fox, Disney. Nuts. All that good stuff. Uh, we're going to talk about uh, some of the potential that it has, what characters we want to see, what storylines we may want to see, what we don't want to see, um, any potential actors, just different things like that. We're going to talk a little Shazam. I got to see Shazam, a little early screening of that. Um, spoiler alert, spoiler alert. It's great. Um, and, um, uh, so we got a, got a nice show for you. Uh, it should be fun. It's going to be a little different. It's going to sound a little different. Like I said, Oz had a terrible idea. It was great. Um, yeah, yeah. Uh, 
let's 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 get all into it, man. I'm looking forward to hearing what you have to say about um, Shazam. Um, would not to be confused with Captain Marvel, although he was technically and is Captain Marvel Shazam. But anyway, the best Captain Marvel flick um, happened to be Shazam. <laughs> that's a good way of saying that. That's awesome. Yeah, you know, the best Captain Marvel flick was Shazam. Yeah, that's great. Okay, uh, you know. That's, that's just me. That's just my opinion. Um, you know. Uh, hey, but can, I, but can I just touch base on one thing? You know, I, I, I've been thinking about this ever since uh, Regular Scott posed the question and the idea. Man, it's a hard thing for the blurred uh, nowadays because we want that we want that merger to happen because we can get some continuity. We can get everybody. We can get some epic stuff happening. But then... You know, my little conspiracy brain always goes with why are all these companies merging? And whenever, whenever the big boys merge, they leave the little people out. But but you know, it's, it's a hard world for blurs. You know, so yeah. And, and and I guess Disney, the almighty Disney, is going mm, content. We got some new viewers coming out. So what what they got to do with anything though? It's just hard, man. It's hard because I I want I want to. I want to enjoy the possibilities of all of that. Like, man, who, who doesn't want to see on the big screen the Fantastic Four, the Avengers, X Men, Spider Man all together in one in one world? Who doesn't want to see that in some epic super battle, dude? That hey, if you really wanted to play your cards right, they, they were limited. What they should have did, and I hate shitting on people because you know you got to wipe all that up. Is just that. They sh- they what should have happened <laughs> was after the merger have this big Fantastic Four, Avengers, Spider Man. That's the Infinity Gauntlet, dude, and Black Panther. All my respect. That's the Infinity Gauntlet, Boomer. That would man, you would make it would be the first trillion dollar movie sales ever made, dude. You, there's no movie making it. No movie's making a trillion. Um, we, we, we live in this wild world. I'm going to say, we live in a world of possibilities. When we hit that first, maybe we already have actually, when we hit that first five billion, it's cool. But when we hit that first one trillion, just know it ain't trickle down economics, dude. Some fat cats dude, are Dude, a that trillion money. is not happening. How many movies have even hit two billion? Oh, on, wait, dude, there have been movies that made How over. many have made $2 billion? It ain't about the many. It's about it's about that one that does it. Okay, so name name one. Oh, uh, wait, so... Name name one. Have we ever... Hey, to, uh, let's pose a question to our um, listeners. Has there ever been a billion dollar one? Yeah. Okay, has there ever been a $2 billion one? I don't know. Worldwide sales and everything. I don't know. I know tr- a trillion is pipe dreams, dude. But I'm just saying, man. You know, it's, it's a it's a crazy world out there. It's a crazy world. So you so you pretty much said the, the trillion thing with no context. All right. So the trillion thing was probably in the year 2054. So let's, let's just play off of this trillion thing. Oh, no. Um, <laughs> Once again, another bad idea. Oh, how how much did this movie make opening weekend? If it oh, made a trillion dollars, son, you 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 missed out. And so they started the plan of this movie in 2021 because they got their they got all their shit together. And so they got uh, they they got new casting for everybody just to appeal to the younger crowd and everything. They found some st- people weren't so excited. Um, actually. People were people were on the fence. They were like, "Man, another Fantastic Four um, movie! Everyone you've done has been booty." Um, they actually found four cast members for the new Fantastic, Fantastic Four movie. Found the new Spider Man um, and got to recast the Avengers, and everybody was excited. There was one bit of controversy when the person who played the Hulk, um, and just being and just being in tradition. Spoiler alert! Um, the whole movie, but that was just part of the game. I think, like 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 Mark like Mark uh, Raphael usually does. Mark Ruffalo, yeah, like he usually. <laughs> Yo, does. you and these names, man. <laughs> Where's shout out the mixed girl Maine? Hey, 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 Maine, if you're listening, Maine, I'm not good with names, <laughs> but I always remember faces. Okay, 
Yeah, she had to call you out for Idris Elba. Yeah, oh man, with the old A hey, look, dude. Yeah, and I'm, I'm, I'm gonna call her out. The only reason Maine called me out was because that was her dude. She don't care how, what kind of names. I, I could have pronounced. Um, I, I could have <laughs> said President Karak Lalama, and she would be like, "Oh yeah, I remember that dude. He was 44." <laughs> As long as it was her douche, that's the only time she could upset the man. I would be like, hey, um, Danny, you know, Danny, Danny Slover was in um, Lethal Weapon. She looked, yep, that's correct. But if I would ever said anything about our dude Samuel Jackson, you, wait, wait, it is Samuel L. Jackson. <laughs> I know, dude, I know the game. So there's there's been four movies that hit two billion Avengers Infinity War, Whoa. Star Wars Force Awakens, Titanic. Yeah. Titanic. And Avatar. Well, why can't we do like a, a crossover? No, no movie has hit three billion. Yet. Okay, so so the three billion dollar movie to piggyback off that is a crossover with the Titanic, <laughs> Star Wars, and Avengers. See, this is this is what people don't realize is that is that James Cameron's Avatar, the one that's going to be underwater, <laughs> it's going to have all the characters that were lost from Titanic. It's actually a sequel, yeah. which was set up by the Avatar movie. So now this underwater one is a sequel to Titanic. Jack's coming back. Yeah, so... so Mr. Jack, Jack never let go. Mr. Cameron did the land. Now the next one's going to be the sea. So three... Because he said there's a trilogy, so three is air... <laughs> So, I mean, hey, I don't, I don't judge because this dude has has, has this. He's, he's got very two two billion dollar movies. Yeah, he's been very influential, so. and, and I'm telling you, he he's like going. I know he's listening to the podcast, going, "Hey, you know what? Uncle Oz makes a point." No, he's not listening to the podcast. But I'm just saying, come on, man. All I gotta say about that is, uh, yeah, if you betray him, I'll get your legs back, your real legs. Avatar. Remember that part? I didn't see Avatar. Oh, really? No. Oh, man. That, were... that didn't interest me one bit. So and and for the everybody, don't interest me one bit. For everybody, I'm going I'm to give regular Scott the 10-second uh, skinny on Avatar. <laughs> hey, that means you can go take your showers now. Yeah, hey, your bees. I know you're showering right now. <laughs> so... To make the and I'm and, and and since everybody called me out on the last one, I've been very mindful of my um, how people might say uh, um, monologues. So I'll make this a ten second one. <laughs> Avatar is basically nine foot tall blue people dances with wolves. Well, you did it in eight seconds, so... Boom, <laughs> yeah, Hey, it. I'm telling you, hey, there's a new Ozzy Killmonger, man. <laughs> Uncle, Uncle Oz... Hey, Uncle Oz has the capacity to change. So, and since since several people... If probably you could 15, change, if we could change, we all could change. Rocky IV. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Oh, so so so, uh, so when I don't see Avatar, you got to give me a skinny. But when you haven't seen a Rocky movie... Right, because we are blurred, and that would be <laughs> science fiction. Nerd is like, Rocky ain't got nothing to do with science fiction. Sylvester Stallone was in Guardians of the Galaxy two, yeah. and Dolph Lundgren was in Aquaman. Oh, we should not. And for- he was the Punisher. Oh, we should, and we should not forget Sylvester Stallone was also. And was also Judge Dredd. Right, and he was also in Cobra, um, the Renegade Cop movie that he has a um, a gray um, vintage cop car. And he's a detective. And so everybody in the hood is like, oh, yeah, yeah, that's the car. That's a detective, dude. He ain't hiding from nobody, dude. But he's a, he's a badass. Five or six. Um, but anyway, um, he's also in The Expendables. But you, he, wouldn't, you wouldn't say anything about his height to him if you were looking at him. Because I'd be trying to get a job, son. I'd be like, hey, Sylvester, you got the same name as me. And, <laughs> and, and, and by the way, is it, just, is it just me or are you tall? You know, oh, I'll be trying to get a gig with that cat, dude. I'm trying to get in Expendables number four, man. Uncle Oz returns. You know, I want to be the Wesley Snipes character, dude. But, but to, re- to return, that means you have to have been there. Oh, right, right, right. <laughs> so, um, okay, so I want to do the Uncle Oz, like a, 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 a swift cameo for number four. Get that loot coming in number five for <laughs> Uncle Oz returns. Once again... Regular Scott poses a good point once again. Oh, all right. Well, look, before we get too deep into things, allow me to set the table. This is Take a Knee for Marvel vs. DC. I am your host, Regular Scott. 
I am here at half strength. I got the common connoisseur, the mighty Ozzy Killmonger. Ozzy, say what's up. What's up, everybody? Good people, good people. As you know, V's is not here. He's he, showering. I Well, he probably did shower, but I don't think he's showering at this exact moment. Regular Scott, i got to pose a question for you for V's. I, we got to ask V's for the next one. Do you think this is V's setup? <laughs> he works out. He rewards himself with ice cream and Oreo cookies, and then he takes a shower. And that takes up the whole, like, our length of our podcast. And he's chiming in every <laughs> once in a while. <laughs> he's chiming in, like, after he showers, after, while he's making his food. Well, I'm getting suspicious because a lot of things are starting to make sense. Because at certain points during the old shows, I remember him, I was like, are you eating food, dude? <laughs> and then it's Is that water going on? Is that water going on? Dude. Yeah, you're right. Because then there's all these, is that you? What's going on? Wait, what sound effect is that? Dude, now should... that's why his sound be breaking up. Because he'd be walking out the bathroom Gosh, to I, the kitchen. I heard him talking to a rubber ducky, dude. So I, and I was like, oh, are you talking to, is this, it's starting to make sense, man. <laughs> Well, you know, I was speaking with Jay the other day and um, from Defy Life, and uh, definitely check out our last show. We had Jay and Money on from the Defy awesome. Life podcast. We and also Migs. have Movie Man Migs. Yeah, it was um, awesome. And uh, I was speaking with Jay the other day. We we, we talk a lot. Um, and uh, you, amongst yourselves, by the way. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah. And then you guys stir the pot and then bring it up to us, and then you wait for <laughs> you wait for bees just to be because he's hungry. It's like this dude has a has a. Has a controversy tapeworm, dude. He's just waiting for things to happen. Listen, I, I, I'll be the first to admit, I definitely don't mind stirring the pot. And uh, Jay definitely doesn't mind helping me stir the pot. So it works out perfect. But I was talking with Jay the other day. And we were like, um, you know, they're about to have their 100th episode. Yeah. Um, there's a little plug for you, Jay. Yeah, so, man. There you shout go. Out, shout out. I don't know how many of those I can give you. Y'all don't really need the plugs anyway. We need the plugs. Anyway, so... We're That's trying to hit that 22,000, dude. 20,000. Why do you keep saying 22,000? What is this 22,000? You got to be 2,000 more, man. Okay. Really get, All right. Anyway, they about to hit their 100th episode, which is awesome. Congratulations to you guys. And, um, you know, me and Jay were like, you know, when we get to like our 50th, you know, I was thinking, you know, I might do something for the show. And Jay was like, yeah, but, you know, V's can't be on that because V's would only be on like episode like 40, 35. That's pretty, that's pretty funny. So... I think you're right, Jay. So you know, when we get to fifty, we might not be able to have V's on. No, what tells me when we hit fifty, that's when that's when V's is like, All right, man, I'm gonna take my shower before the show. <laughs> Cause hey, that's not hey, regular style, why are you laughing? That's not funny. <laughs> That's not funny. I'm gonna take style. my shower before Cause he, the cause show. Because he's gonna he's gonna see that we that we become legit. He's like, you know what? I'm going to eat my ice cream as a reward after the show ends, you know. I'm still going to do my workout. But he's, he's hey, I'm, I'm looking forward to it. He, he's going to come together. It's going to be good. You know what? We're going to take a quick commercial break, and we're going to play a quick promo from the Defy Life podcast. 100th episode coming up. Yo, what up, my people? This is J.R. Glant from Defy Life. If you're looking for an in-depth, honest, at times hilarious conversation on anything from current events to sports, to entertainment, and more. Check out myself, Alvin, Thomas, Gerald, and Yosh on the Defy Life podcast. Dropping every Wednesday, available at GoDefyLife.com and everywhere your favorite podcasts are available. And as always, if you're not rocking with Defy Life, what's your life about? So, back to the show. I rock with Defy Life. Or you ain't got no choice because you work for Defy Life. Right. I'm still trying to keep this show, man. So y'all stop this controversy, dude, because it's stressing me out. You know? Nah, I don't, well, the, the beef is over, so. Oh, good. Good, good, good. At least as far as I know. Oh. I mean, you ain't had no beef anyway, because when we did have beef, you was trying to cower in the corner. I wasn't cowering in the corner. I was just defending my right to have a show and have fun and not lose something that I like to do. <laughs> By someone who likes to take a shower and eat ice cream, dude. <laughs> And by another instigator. Why are you dude? taking shots at V's when V's not here? I'm not. I'm talking about you, dude. You're the instigator, dude. <laughs> hey, hey, hey. There's no taking shots at V's. Regular Scott revealed to me before we started this show that it ain't just V's. This cat is the. He is. He conducts the show and keeps us in line. He told me that he'd be taking a shower too. <laughs> I didn't say so, that. First of all, I want to know what is up with all this cleanliness that's going on <laughs> for the show. I thought we were trying to keep it down and dirty for the blurs, man. 
Oh, man. So Oz is just going off the rails. So look, let's get into some news. Okay. Um, I got some Twitter polls. Okay. Uh, you know I love a good Twitter poll. And, and, and please, I, I, I feel April, if not March, is going to be my month to win one Twitter poll. No. Um, so only one Avenger can survive in game. Who will it be? With over 112 votes. The choices were Steve Rogers, Thor, Iron Man, or Black Widow. Black, that was random. Um, people said Steve Rogers. One of the replies from uh, Balanced Warrior at Vision of Balanced Warrior uh, says, uh, just a cat shaking its head saying, no, I'm not choosing any of them. So, but the winner with over 45% was Thor. Steve Rogers came in last with 14%. So, see, that's the eternal battle because we had this struggle. Everybody was like, oh, the Thor movies are horrible, but we love Thor and the Avengers. I think the Thor thing is just the people like Thor. Well, Chris Hemsworth's a good actor, and he, he, he's found his niche with Thor being kind of the dry humor. Yeah. You know, and that's, it's, it's a good way to use Thor. When he needs to go hard, he goes pretty hard. No, yeah. Um, so I still think Thor Butcher of Gods is one of the best storylines ever written for um uh for Thor the comic. It's when amazing. comic connoisseur speaks, you listen. <laughs> Amen. All right. You can only bring back one dusted character Ooh. for Avengers Endgame. The rest stay dusted. Who are you bringing back? Your choices are Spider Man, Black Panther, Doctor Strange, or Groot. <laughs> I am Groot. Um it feels like, to me, it's a tour. It's either Spider-Man. I know this one. It's either Spider-Man or Doctor Strange. Boom. So who are you picking? I'm picking Doctor Spider-Man. Everybody loves a cute Spider-Man. They want him. Because they, they feel bad. People picked Spider-Man to win because they felt bad. When he was like, oh, don't let me go. I was like, yeah, you should go. With over 216 votes, with 49% of the vote, Spider-Man. Told you. Number two, Doctor Strange with 31% of the vote. Told you. And Black Panther narrowly beats out Groot 11 to 9. Y'all wrong for that. <laughs> <laughs> all, you, all you Twitter people, you know y'all wrong for that. So pretty much what I'm taking from that is the two white guys they want to live and they want the black guy just to barely survive longer than a stick. You want longer than a stick that, that can regenerate. That's terrible, dude. <laughs> And and, and, and and you know what? Everybody would have been, would have been complaining if the T'Challa would have been crying to the Dora Major saying, "I don't want to go," because that's the only way y'all, y'all would have let him win. Man, that's terrible. You know, I to be oh, wait, hold on, I'm not, I don't want to interrupt you. I'm getting upset now. Go take your showers. This dude, let me see. Black Panther narrowly <laughs> beat a piece of wood that speaks two words that you were supposed to interpret. Three words. Yeah, I am Groot. Got three words that you were that apparently is Shakespearean. <laughs> that when he says I am Groot in his language, he is literally reading off Homer the Odyssey, <laughs> the Iliad. He's reading this off. He's reading War and Peace. You know, like he, he, I get it, dude. I get it. I understand. Do you get it? I get it. Because you I don't get sound it. like you get it. No, no. I ever remember my monologues. Regular, hey, look, regular Scott and Bees were about to hit the shower, but I told you. <laughs> Bees is not on the show. Leave that man out of this. Bees is here in spirit, man. Okay, he's here in spirit. And the only reason I say that is because every time me and Bees are together, we know we say the right thing around regular Scott, and we do, we crush him, so it's fine. I'm with you, Bees. You know we're right every time. And you know, you know speaking of that, crushing me. Um, it kind of brings up a memory of the intervention of regular Scott. You guys should check that episode out, too. That was a great one. Uh, it was great for y'all. Um, West Coast J. Shout out to West Coast J. Hey, let me tell you, West Coast J, I, re- I, I listen to that episode every morning because that's what I do. I don't eat breakfast. That's my bre- That's what gets me through the morning and day, to know that regular Scott, that, that too soon, but you are not alone. Yo, this is not. Okay. We, we might need to have West Coast Jay back on the show. I, mean, I might, man. Be West Coast Jay was dropping some. I was like, hey, I'm the history major. He was dropping some major history on me. I was like, whoa. Yeah. Well, it got, it got intense, man. I, I think I think I've I think I've 
I've forgiven him for having an intervention on me. Yeah. I think I'm, enough time has passed. And I'm... And I, think, I think we need to... to you know, we, we just squashed our beef with the five life. I think it's time for me to, you know, bury the hatchet with West Coast Jack. I, I do too. And, and all jokes aside, I think that um, it's important to squash that beef, especially since... Well, I, I know you want to squash the beef because oh, no, Lord no, no. knows if somebody has beef, you ain't going to help. No, no. It, it, well, especially with West Coast Jay, you should squash that beef just because I, I know it was hard for you to be wrong, but you're wrong a lot. But it's still hard for you to be wrong. And and it was like, it, it was sort of like an intervention, you know, and, and interventions are tough because well, after that, the intervention... That was, that was the name of the episode, so yeah. Well, yeah exactly what it was. Well, interventions are tough because... After the intervention, you got to deal with what you have to do to make things right. And, and it's well, well look, just so you know, the intervention didn't work because I'm still watching Arrow, still going hard. Shout out to Arrow season seven. Hey, and, and by the way, shout out to the three people still watching Arrow because I know you. I know it's hard in your daily schedule to flip between Arrow and Black Lightning. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Arrow, hey, listen, you you ain't gotta like Arrow. Arrow is not as bad as Black Lightning. Um, and I know it's hard to um, be, for the uh, I, you know I gotta stop being mean. I know it's hard for those ten viewers to watch to switch between to switch between Green Arrow and Black Lightning and still maintain your daily life because I know that consumes a lot of your life. Do, you know, you know what West Coast J? Never mind. <laughs> Never mind. Hey, uh, West Coast J, we're gonna be hollering to you, man. We're, we're gonna get you on real shoot. Listen, and and Maine, we're gonna get you. We're gonna get you back in blurred vision as soon as I uh, learn how to um, how to talk, how to properly articulate um, the the people that you like. So, <laughs> yo, why are you taking? Sh- why are you like? What are you? What are you doing? We're trying to like we we're squashing beef, and Listen, you out here like starting beef. I know, you know, and I gotta, I gotta, I gotta maintain. I asked regular Scott for one favor. If we're gonna do a side show, I said, bring me some beer. This dude brought me. <laughs> Listen, hey, hey, to all our listeners. Oh my gosh, you got to put me out there. Oh, I am. This dude brought me two rusty beers. Oh, so now, God. now, to all of our listeners, let me let me oh, let, let, let me make sure you let me let me make sure you understand what I'm saying here. Let me make sure you understand what I'm saying here. Rusty beer is not some microbrewery. Okay, must rusty beer is not some new lager. <laughs> it's a new IPA. Don't let them fool you. It is a new IPA. Right, rusty beer is <laughs> is is two Coronas that have rust on the bottle on the bottle caps and rust on the top. So <laughs> on the outside, though. So I, let me. This is just to. This is a public service announcement. What is going no, on? No, it's okay. This is a public. <laughs> okay. This is a public service announcement that I want to do to all of our listeners. Um, whenever you have to get a tetanus shot to drink a beer, it's not worth it. Okay, so um, yeah, that's all I gotta say. But we're gonna do fine. I'm hallucinating. I'm okay. Um, I don't. I don't feel totally right, and I can't oh feel my. my I can't feel my my right arm. But we're gonna power through this because um, you know, rusty beer. There has to be something good about rusty beer. Because um, why would you have rusty beer? Why would you give? Your, why would you give your co your co person in a podcast you want to do live co host? Is he? They're not a talk, dude. Why would you give your co host who you're doing to do a live podcast? It's with? not live. Exactly. <laughs> um, it's live to me because he can't. Hey, we're together. He can I can't do anything about the edit. This is all his show. But why don't you give your, your co-host a rusty beer? Unless you're trying to say something to him, man. Listen, I told this guy. I didn't know they were rusty. I pulled them out the fridge. I'm not a big drinker. I have a beer every now and then, okay? So I don't know how long they've been. They've been in there for a little bit. I admit it. Now, if you say I'm not a big drinker and they've been in your fridge and they're rusty, dude, that, that's that's a year. No, no I, I, I 100% promise you they've not been in there for I, I will 100% promise you, I had a infection, and it, it was like it, it, it was like so like an upper respiratory infection, and I drank the beer and it cured it because it was penicillin. So it's we it, listen. There are scientists who came to our house in black ops who wanted a sample of that beer because he said this could cure a lot of things. So, uh, I, like. Come on, man. <laughs> what? <laughs> How did we get on rusty beer? I, I'm just saying. I'm trying to explain the circumstance. And so if I pass out at any time, it's okay. Oh, man. 
man. Or if you hear me snoring, uh, that's I'm just taking a shower. If you're snoring, you're taking a shower. It's running water. Okay. Um, one of these X Men can have a solo movie. Who will it be? Uh, Your choices are Gambit. Okay. Nightcrawler. Oh. Iceman. Oh. And Storm. To, uh, to 240 uh, votes were placed. And props, uh, props to everybody for not saying Wolverine again. Well, yeah. I, didn't, I, didn't, I didn't put Wolverine as a choice. I know. That's good. I love that. So, hey, the Nightcrawler thing is really interesting because, like, that, that, that's history. Because you got, you got Mystique and Rogue who could play in that. Before, and before you continue, I, I, I do want to get your opinion on it. But let me just read a couple of the, uh, a couple of the comments mm-hmm. that were part of that. Do a Nightcrawler movie. This mm. is from uh, Tony Walton See? at Walt Gator 93 Do a Nightcrawler movie in which they take notes from the Ultimate Universe, where at first he is part of Weapon X, is an assassin and part of a Black Ops team. So they were trying... You got a taste of it in that X-Men movie where he goes out, he goes all in on the president. Mm-hmm. Nightcrawler's lethal, dude. And people, people sleep. His tail... Is a is a, just another like limb that he uses, and he's an expert in the in the comic. He's an expert swordsman. He's able to teleport up to like probably twenty people or so. Um, he's got a little bit of the occult in him. He's got hidden history with Rogue and um, Mystique, who could, possibly could be his mother. Um, very religious. Very his identity in Christianity is 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 set. He was the only reason that um, when the X Men versus Dracula. That Dracula was able to like that they were able to defeat Dracula. There was a, there's a whole little nerd story where Dracula fights the X Men because he, he's like all in love with Storm. So Wolverine goes, I know the drill. Takes out his adamantine claws, puts it in the form of a cross, and Dracula goes, whoom, throws away. He says, you have to believe. And then Nightcrawler just takes two pieces of sticks, put them together. He goes, here, demon, take this for I believe. And Dracula's like burning. It's like ah, I can't take it. I can't take it. Yeah, it's really good. So, uh, so that's a good, that's a good thing about Nightcrawler. Let me tell you, <clears throat> you now Gambit just Gambit's been overdue for a movie forever, dude. They've been talking and playing around with that cat. Everybody got pseudo excited when that Wolverine movie came out. You saw a taste of him there too, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, but he's a hard one to do a, to do a proper story unless you're going to say let's just do a Gambit and the Guild story for when he, his days in New Orleans when he's in the Thief Guild versus the Assassin Guild. Um, I, I had, and I got one more I wanted to read from, uh, <laughs> his name is Precious I'm Horny at Beta Ray Frieza. Oh, Precious. <laughs> oh, man. Um, Wait, at Beta Ray Frieza? Frieza. Like so Dragon this Ball Z. said Precious I'm Horny at Dragon do Ball Z. Do not make fun of the listeners, man. No, no. Hey, dude. Hey, <laughs> Precious. Do, hey, it's hey. Hey. All right. Storm could work similar to Black Panther in tone slash structure and create an X-Men slash Black Panther mini franchise. Gambit could be a dark thriller like Memento. Mm-hmm. Iceman could be an emotional coming out story. I know. And Nightcrawler could be a campy horror comedy like Evil Dead. Precious, I, I, I'm, I'm going to start following you after this because I'm with it. I like that because all that sounds good. But the one thing I do want to add... For, I, I like all that. Um, there's like good piece in it. Now, Storm is very interesting because that plays out. Just her origin story of Africa, her being seen as a goddess, up to the X-Men. But Storm plays everywhere. Storm is a punk rocker. Storm uh, went nuts and crazy in Japan. Got to where she got her leather jacket and mohawk. Storm is still the de facto leader of the Morlocks, by the way. Um, Callisto, he, she just said, Callisto, you can be in charge while I do the X-Men. Um, so Storm's very lethal. That's a that could be a whole new Black Panther, and it could just be something giving Black women time and their due. So that's cool. And um, that's really cool, Precious. I like that. That's really cool. Pan door dude, pan tour dude at Cap Painter said, "Give me four more choices." So I don't think they liked any of the choices. Um. Well. Pain or dude? Um, what would you What would you like to see as a? Um, well, he can't really respond to you right now. Well, if you could, I know you. I know you're listening right now. <laughs> um, you're not doing anything. I know what you're doing on the Saturday, on the Sunday, so it's fine. But what What, what would you like to see? Because like, they didn't know you're, we it's recording, very limited. So. 
Because what did you want to see? A, oh, you want to see a Forge movie? I'm with you. <laughs> Hey, no, you, you know, it, 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 you know what? I never thought about it that way, but thank you. That's awesome. So, like I said, 240 votes with over 44 percent of the vote. Oh, you want me to tell you who got it? Who Storm. Got it? Storm got it. Who came in second with 31 percent? Man, that's hard because I was thinking either Gambit or Nightwing, but Crawler. I'm, Night. Um, Dick Grayson um, <laughs> came in second. Hey, Nightcrawler or Gambit is going to be. Neither one of those two guys. The other person. Iceman? Got it. Iceman got numbered the next one. Iceman came in last with 7%. Wow. So it's Gambit. Gambit 31, Nightcrawler 8. Yeah. Hey, and I forgot about like, I know people want to see that awesome coming out story of, I, of, of, of Bobby Drake since he came out. He's gay. But that's sort of like a new phenomenon, dude. It's, I, I could buy North Star. More than why does he? Why does it need to be a coming out story? Why can't he just be gay? Uh, well, and and and, and like you can still do his like back yeah. history and show it, but why can't he just be gay? Well, why does it I, have to be a big coming out story? Yeah, because we, we've seen that in the cinema already. The coming out, coming out story. He just needs to be himself just who, be, just as, be as gay. a gay mutant. Yeah, just be gay. Because because people, if you want to do that, it's awesome. But let me tell you, the coming out story for the white gay male has happened. But the but the mutant who is who has omega powers who has omega level powers um, that has not happened yet. And Iceman is that mutant, by the way. Um, people forget he can reconstitute himself too. When he's in his ice form, if anybody he's been shattered before and he's reconstituted his whole body before. He he can control even if there's any drop of moisture. He control he can control that too. He's lethal, dude. Sandman ain't nothing compared to Iceman. Um, he and the reason why he was a, he was all the um, Frosty the Snowman character in the beginning of the old X Men was because he had to mature into his powers. He was Frosty, then he became Ice, um, and Spider Man is amazing friends. And then he his new his like latest form should just be like clear ice because he's like he's lethal, dude. You got a taste of who he was in um, Age of Apocalypse. Age of Apocalypse, um, the comic, you got a taste of oh, who... Okay. Sorry, Age of not, Apocalypse... Not, not the movie. Right. It, you did not get a taste of anything. Um, you got a taste... Of, he had a very, very cool scene in X-Men Last Stand. Not, yeah. a, not a great movie, but he had a really cool scene when he was fighting Pyro. And Pyro was like, you know... Toe to toe. Yeah, and Pyro was like, oh, you know, this is, you know, I thought you should have learned something in school. This is why I left school. And Iceman turned into his ice form and grabbed yeah. him and was like, this, you should have stayed in school. Yeah, see, that was that was really cool. That's probably the best. That's probably the best scene from that movie. Well, and also, it was nah, cool. I don't know. The cannonball scene was pretty good with Wolverine and Colossus and the. Yeah, that's that fine. was really cool. That was good. But, but I also like. <clears throat> there's also the Iceman when he's like at the academy. i um, at the uh, mansion where he puts up the ice shield. Ah, uh, X two. Yeah, Wolverine that was, that was and Striker. Cool. That was cool too. That was a great one. You, cool you, look, you look forward to it, man. And to be honest, they kind of did his coming out story. With him coming out as a mutant in X two, like that they was did. that's him coming out as being gay or anything by him saying I am a mutant. Like that's it's the same themes they were showing, right? You, you, you like what, they they kind of did it already. You have to, you you people you, may not realize it, but that's to me that I took that as anyone who has who is not, I don't know if difference the right word, but you know. They or don't, felt different. Or felt, that's a better way of putting yeah. it. Anyone who's felt different and wanted to tell their parents how they felt, like, that's, to me, that's how, I don't know how a conversation would go, but that's how I would see a conversation with a gay ch- a gay person and their parents going. You'd be well, really nervous, you'd have your support team with you, and you'd tell them. And, and, they're, and, and, and definitely recognizing and shouting out that there are people who do not, who, who, do not have a support system, and at that's all. true. That's absolutely true. And I and they want to see themselves represented, but I, I, you know, but also along, along those lines too. That sometimes you just need a rock 'em sock 'em blowout movie to make you forget about everything. That's true. That's true. That's very true. Very true. Every now and then you got a good point. And and and, and, and let me tell you, thank you, Regular Scott. I appreciate that because the other point that we need to say, the most important point and the most serious point of all this. Every episode, I'm creeping in on the on that Twitter, dude. I'm telling you, April is my month. I'm taking over the Twitter. 
I'm taking over the Twitter, dude. There's no more of it. Uncle Scott. <laughs> uh, um, Uncle Oz will not be losing any more Twitter polls as of April. This you hear. So. <laughs> hey, look, y'all hear him. Believe it when you see it, okay? When you see it, Uncle Oz on Twitter, then you can believe it. Until then, just stick to Take a Knee for Marvel vs. DC. Oh, yeah. You can find us on Twitter at Knee for Marvel vs. DC. That's the number four. If you have any questions, email us questions. We'll read them live on the show. Um, or just comment on it, uh, leave us something on the Twitter. We will read it live on the show. Our email is knee 4 dc at gmail.com. Again, it could be questions about absolutely anything. Our favorite comic, our first comic, our least favorite, favorite movie, TV show. What do we recommend? Anything Why like, is regular Scott always wrong? You, you, just, you, could you can send anything. that. If you, if you want to just tell me how much you hate Arrow and how you binged it just like West Coast Jay did and you want to give me another intervention, I'll take it. Right. Email us. We'll read it on the show. Um, you can also download this show at iTunes, Spreaker, GoDefyLife.com, um, Radio Public, TuneIn Radio, Spotify, anywhere else you can download uh, podcasts. Also... Go to FileLifeGear.com. Check out our shirts. We got new shirts coming up. Uh, we got some new ones coming out here in the next couple months, but we got the old ones and they are still fire. Definitely go be part of the movement. Go to FileLife.com. Go to Life Gear. Check all that out. Follow us on Twitter, please. And, and, and the gram. All right, now back to business. And I got one more Twitter poll. <laughs> I'm, ready, I'm ready for it. If Batman turned evil and you had to pick one duo... From the Bat family to stop him, who would it be? And these are your choices. Tim Drake and Stephanie Brown. Barbara Gordon and Grayson. Jason Todd and Damian Wayne. And Cassandra Kane and Kate Kane. Oh, okay. Here we go. We, we just got to be, we, we, we just have to be for real. Well, that that, uh, that, that did took, not go well. That took a turn. We got a we got a phone call from a in, potential investor. Yeah, we had a, we had. A, we, um, sorry about that, uh, everybody. We got a phone call from a potential investor, but they wanted us to sign a contract <laughs> while we we're in the middle of our podcast. <laughs> we um, we had to tell them that we had one more Twitter poll that we needed to answer, and then we'd get back to them uh, just to be fair. So just, <laughs> that was crazy. Yeah. So let me get back to the Twitter poll I was on. Um, if Batman turned evil and you had to pick one duo from the Bat family to stop too, him, man. who would it be? Tim Drake, Stephanie Brown, Barbara Gordon, Grayson, Jason Todd, Damian Wayne, Cassandra Kane, and Kate Kane. Let me tell you something. What I meant to say, and I wanted to start from the breakdown, and you may go take a shower for this one because this will be a monologue. If you put Stephanie Brown, Tim Drake together to get a bad Batman... You would have a person who is an awesome um, tracker and detective, but they are dead. They are dead, <laughs> dead, dead. Because neither of them can fight. Oh, me, they were, neither one of them do. do I think you've tried to do this. Oh, you're almost as good as Lady Shiva. No, a bad Batman. They, well, they, when did, when did, hold on, they, when they, did they do that? They, when they first introduced the Tim Drake as... Robin, he was fight Lady Shiva and all this stuff. It, it was just trying to. It, it was a it was a publicity stunt to try and make people go, okay, well he's all right. No, Tim no. Drake's probably, in my opinion, the f- fifth best fighting Robin. I will just tell you, in my opinion, he is like the worst fighting Robin. Because Damien, I'll go Damien. He's the worst fighting. I'll Robin. go Damien, Dick, Carrie Kelly. I just think she's brutal. Tim Drake is smart. He's, Jason Todd. He's Tim Drake. Tim Drake is the Commissioner Gordon of the Batman family. Minus Commissioner Gordon. Are we you know talking Gotham Commissioner Gordon? Are no, we talking I, Batman I, Commissioner Gotham Gordon? Gotham doesn't mean I'm talking this I'm talking Batman the comic. So look, here like I, you know like Batman the comic where Commissioner Gordon's Batman. No, 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 no. no. I mean, not Batman the comic where um, Batman uh, has, has a metal had, suit. Has had sex with uh, his uh, daughter and he doesn't know on a rooftop. Not not that dude either. So, but look, but, like, but everyone knows the deal. Tim Drake, Steph, um, Car- Carrie, right? Carrie Kelly. Carrie Kelly. They're done. They're they're done. No, now, no, no, no. Tim Drake and Stephanie Brown. Stephanie Brown. They're done. Right. So. The, Spoiler. Now, the one, the one that that's going to be a problem is Cassandra 
and back woman because both of them do not give a f about stuff. The only reason that they don't kill is because they're reined in by Batman. So if a bad Batman is like, all right, well, let's take him down. And Batwoman will shoot him. Oh, Batwoman will definitely shoot him. And Cassandra will fight him. Toe-to-toe. Now, here's, here's, I saw a couple comments that said Cassandra could take him by herself. No, no. Who would no. win in a fight one-on-one, Cassandra Kane or Batman? Batman. And that, that's just, I know she's got that whole weird, I don't talk because my language is violent. Man, um, Batman's got years of experience fighting every sort of way. And I, Cassandra's brutal. And I give her, I, I put her right up there with the Bat family, but they're not taking out Bruce. And, and what do you think about uh, Damien and Jason Todd? Now, again, those two, if you want them, it, it, there's a little bit of father-son loyalty there, but if you want them to take him out, we must remember with those two, they got the raw all influence heavily. You know, they're, they'll, they, they will do damage. A lot of Lazarus pit. So, so if you're really looking at it... So what you, about Barbara and Grace? I know, but see, if, you, if you break down those polls, you're looking at Barbara and Dick... Tim and Stephanie on the side of like going, oh, he's our father figure. We can't hurt him. We can bring him in without killing him. Right. And you have the other two. You got Damien and you got Jason and you got Cassandra and you got and you got your girl um, Batwoman. Kate Kane. Okay. And they're they're in the Batman family because Batman knows how crazy they be. He's trying to rein them in. That's a good way. That's a really you know what I'm saying? Yeah, that's a good, that's they're, a good way they're, of they're the outsider, they're, they're the outsiders that Batman's trying to be like, hey, you're a fringe element, and I see the good and bad in you. I need to bring out the good because the bad I don't feel like taking on right now. That's where I see it. And I, I, I kind of did those uh, matchups a certain way. I, you know, Tim, Tim and Stephanie, Barbara and Grayson, there's an instant connection between the two. And um, Tim's the best detective, and obvious to me, well, to me, he's the best detective out of the, the Robins. Oh, t- Tim, is, <clears throat> Tim is definitely... Actually, I, I'll say the Bat family, and besides it, Batman. It obviously. is canon... Um, even even Bruce has said that Tim's mind is incredible. You know, he said that he's a better he, he that he is and will be a better detective than Batman is. The only one I was thinking about changing was I was thinking about putting Grayson with Damian Wayne just because they have been Batman and Robin. Yeah, they would have the the largest connection to Batman to be able to connect with him They're, on a personal those level. Those are his true sons. Those are his two sons. Um, Why'd you put Lark in there, dude? I don't think people know who Lark is. You, you, you messed up. Well, well then I'm going to throw out another one. It should be Lark and Azrael. What about Lark and uh, David Zimbabwe? Oh, yeah. Who, uh, who's that dude? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, I I'm going Cassand- I'm, I'm to name, I'm gonna name my, um, one of my uh, super-powered allies after my super-powered ship. Cool. cool. So, hey, I'm, I'm going to bust out this. Uh, the newest member of the Justice League is going to be called the Invisible Jet. It's not gonna be called the Millennium Falcon. Yeah, it's gonna be called. It's gonna be called. Um, <laughs> yeah, dude, come on, man. Come um, on. So, Jason Todd and Damian Wayne. I mean, there's they, that. There, I put them together because look at them. They're the, they're the two most ruthless. Cassandra Kane and Kay Kane. I just think they'd be a terrible duo. Like terrible as in like they would be a they real be, problem. Man, they would be a problem. They would be a real problem because I don't. I think Kay Kane would let Cassandra do what she wants. Yeah. And beat you know? the bricks off of people. And and Cassandra and Kate Kane should be the new Batman and Robin. On no, the, on, on the they female sh- tip. Oh, yeah. on the female tip. Because Dick know? Grayson, to, there's, to me, there's no question. If there has to be another Batman that's not Bruce Wayne, it has to be Dick. It's got to be Dick Grayson. Yeah, like nobody else can be Batman. Watch the throne. It should be him, and that's the way it's supposed to. It should be actually. It should be that now. Well, the people are always like, "Oh, what to do with Dick?" I'm like, "Man, let that cat do his." Bat- Batman can still be Batman um, for Batman Incorporated, but let Dick be Batman. So who do you think won? Oh, they 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 did forty three percent for the win. Oh, you giving a percent on this? One. Oh yeah, they 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 did it for the win. It was Damien and um, and Jason with forty six percent of the vote. Barbara Gordon and Dick Grayson. What? They, Familiarity, dude. A bad Batman. Uh, did you did you not see the Batman who laughs? Y'all know what happens when and Batman Bad Blood. Come on, when he man! Y'all Dick need Grayson. to stop. Bad girl, but but to be fair, if it's not going to be Dick Grayson and Damien, 
Barbara, I mean, he did have sex with her. Barbara and Dick Grayson would probably be the two that could connect with him. Dude, it, it's it's not about if a bad Batman is not going to remember his family and be because even a, even a good Batman is pretty much an asshole to his family. So right? so with that being said, as the first one, who do you think came in second with forty percent? Those those cats. Who? Oh, um, um, Damien. Damien and Jason. Yeah, and then after that, it was the girls, and after that is. I, I was I far after that is Tim. Tim is uh, Tim and Stephanie. Cassandra were eight percent. Tim and Stephanie were seven. Tim and Stephanie just need to be like a couple and go move to France. They are Tim, a couple though. Tim and Stephanie are. But they are a couple. Oh, Tim and Stephanie are Bruce Wayne and Sel- and and, Sel- and Selena Kyle and no, and, and, and and the Christopher No Batman movie where they're they're <laughs> sipping tea. Or, or or eating eating croissants in France, and Alfred's going to cheers to him, going, "Here's a cheers to you, Tim. Don't ever come back to the Batman family because we don't need you." Okay. So. Um. All right. So those are my Twitter polls. Had you know had some good little polls up there. For I'm, I'm going to win, dude. I'm, I'm making it happen. Well, I, you know, we didn't we didn't really like wager anything on those, so that's okay. All I know is to remind regular Scott, I do not have to pay rent this month because I won this contest. So I, said, I, need, I need for regular Scott and the bees to be like to do the right thing. That's that's between you and Jay. I ain't got nothing to do with that. No, I, 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 I'm, I'm to, I, I already told Jay he waiting on you, so I, I ain't got nothing to do cool. with that. Cool, okay. <laughs> that's cool. So um, I'm going to thank everybody for the last day of our podcast. Um, you'll be I'll be replaced with. Um, uh, Suave the Thinker. With Suave the Thinker. Hey, shout out to Suave. You coming back on the show soon. Too. Oh, yeah. And sh- yeah, shout out to Black Mass, too, man. Yeah, check out Black Mass. There's a plug for you. Yeah. yeah. Hey, it's a lot of... We, we plug two yeah, shows. Yeah, Suave. We plugged you. See, don't, don't, don't ever... Yeah, yeah. And well, yo, we um we also got Main and, Bur- and Blurred Vision. Yeah. Check out uh, the Blurred, Blurred Comics podcast as yeah, well. Yeah. A lot, a lot of podcasts love us. Superhero Speaks. Uh, I listened to their show. They're doing a March Madness tournament. They shouted us out. Oh, man. Yeah, uh, awesome. So, awesome. Awesome. him, JD, y'all boys are great over there. They put out a good show. Um, a lot of plugs over here. We're being real kind over here. It got to be, man, because, you know, no more beef, right? Hey, so I just saw this Dora the Explorer trailer. Oof. Can we cut that out? Is she an action hero or something? Yeah. Oh, no. She looks like she's like 20 years old, though. Isn't she supposed to be a kid? Did she have sex with that, man? I think she has sex with uh, what's what's the guy? What's the guy? Danny Trejo. Oof, what's his name? Machete. Machete. Because <laughs> he's, um, he's the he's the he's the the monkey in the fur and boots guy. Isn't there a monkey with boots? But yo, he, he's that dude. Yeah, he's the boots guy. What the? I don't I don't know. I didn't really watch it, but I just I don't know. Man, and then she, the dude from Ant Man and Wasp is the dad. Shout out to Machete, dude. Machete. <laughs> <laughs> shout out to, hey, yo, shout out to Danny. Man, Danny come a long Danny way, dude. Danny Trejo. Hey, Danny was um Danny was in Walker Trek Walker Danny was in Walker, Texas Stranger. Cause that was a strange TV show about a kung about a karate kicking Texas Ranger who wore a cowboy hat and always did the right thing. And you know what? Another shout out to Jay from the Five Life Podcast. They had why Walker, Texas Ranger has a magical Negro. Yeah. His best friend is a magical Negro. Trevet. <laughs> His best friend is a magical Negro. Who is a kung fu kicking cowboy. But the black hat. guy does kung fu oh, too. He, do, he, <laughs> he did he kung wore fu too. A, he wore a 10 gallon hat. <laughs> and was always being like, he, he was a, hey, Trevet was the, <laughs> was the uh, Danny Glover of Lethal Weapon for, for like seven years. He's just not as good of an actor. Oh, he, no, he was he was fine. He I wasn't mean, as good as <laughs> as Danny Glover though. He, oh, I mean, he was good for playing that cat to make sure he did not outshine. So he was he, a better actor than, he, well, than Chuck Norris. It's hard, dude, because you got Chuck Norris being like five foot, like eight, five foot six. In yeah, the but he's a, but but his five foot eight, he could still kill you, like legit. I mean, if I if I if I were to ever put, I mean, don't don't forget, don't forget. You know, he got bit by a snake and the snake died. Oh, well, you Chuck know... Chuck Norris got bit by the snake and the snake died. Don't well, forget that. Well, yeah, I heard Chuck Norris's tears could cure cancer, but he never cries. So, <laughs> you know? That is awesome. You know? so I, I don't think I've heard that one before. You know? I mean... Chuck Norris's tears... I'm writing that down. Chuck <laughs> Norris's tears... 
<laughs> nah, but the just... Norris's tears can cure cancer. I'm writing that down. <laughs> I'm just, but he doesn't cry. I'm just it's that, that, that. so. So we're gonna we're gonna elaborate on this a little bit. No, Rupert, does, Rupert does, has it. Does dude. that make him a supervillain? No. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> hey, it doesn't make Trevet. I'll give Trevet a, a machine gun Kelly. Okay. Oh man. So not only not only can he cure cancer, kill snakes that bite him, but, but he has a magical Negro who but does kung fu. No regular play. You never heard those jokes before. Uh, I ne- no, I've never heard that one. That the oh, last one you just said, I've never heard. Are it. you serious? Yeah, no. about the one curing cancer, but he doesn't cry. Dude, I've never heard that one. Dude, they're, hey, they're, they're, I've never heard that one. That's um, great. <laughs> I heard about like the snake one. I heard like was like that. Yeah. I've never heard that one. That's great. That's yeah. fantastic. Um, <laughs> Yeah, that, that was great. Last night I saw uh, Shazam. Yeah, man. Yeah, you should elaborate on that. Because like, apparently regular Scott says, if you want to see one Captain Marvel movie this year, go see Shazam. <laughs> Listen, Captain Marvel, the Marvel, the, Captain Marvel, Brie Larson was good. Captain Marvel was a good movie. It's not great. And you don't have to go see it in theaters. Like, it's not, you're not missing anything. It's a good movie, though. Shazam? I will die on this hill with Shazam. Shazam's a great movie. Wow. It's a great movie. It is probably, and obviously, you know, I need to see it again, but it's probably the best superhero movie about family I've ever seen. Oh, that's cool. It's a really good family movie. I think the guy who plays Billy Batson, I think he's going to be a star, like a star star. He's got a certain charm about him. Well, he's an amazing director. Is he, is he the one that... No, the that, kid. Oh, that dude. Billy Batson, the guy who plays Billy Batson, the got kid. It, I think it, I think it. he's going to be a star. Like, I, I think he's got something about him. The one that plays Freddy, he's got a great chemistry with him. And Shazam, uh, Zach Levi, has a great chemistry with the, the kid who plays Freddy. There's, I mean, there's, there's great banter. Um, Shazam, um, the cat, he's a, he was in uh, Constantine... Usually plays all. Usually plays that. That dude. he was. He was in a, a a spy show on like ABC or something. Like Is Chuck, that dude? like Chuck or something like that. He was in like a spy show, but he, he does a, he does a really good job of Shazam. As he he portrays this kind of. Oh, not the wizard Shazam. No, the not that's that's yeah. the that's the black guy from, that's him uh, from everywhere from all the other movies. He's in everything. He's that black guy. Yeah, he, oh yeah. So I, I he he literally he literally plays a magical Negro. I thought like that, a literal magical Negro. Yeah, I thought that that dude who plays Shaz- that plays Shazam was the same cat from the Office, but that's not. The no, same dude. that is not. That's that the dude from him. Chuck, right? Yeah, that's the guy from Chuck. Yeah. That's the guy who plays Shazam. He plays Chuck. He was oh, in he Thor: was... The Dark World. He was. Yep. What do you do in the Dark World? He was the guy with the sh- with the mustache who died. Yeah. Yeah. Whoa. With like the sh- the. Sh- oh, he's one of the, he's one of the three warriors. Yes. Yeah, those guys are great. Yeah. He was the one that died. Oh, what? I'm blown. My mind's. Or did, did maybe he didn't die? Maybe he didn't die. He well, might not have died. He might not have died. But he was one of the three. He was the one with the mustache. Well, apparently everybody died on the ship when Thanos came. So what's up? Or on Ragnarok, one of the two, Dude, right? I'm, I'm, just like, I'm like, I'm confused. <laughs> what, are, what are the two? Um, but yeah, he was he was really good. And um, Billy Batson's name is Asher Angel. I I think he's there's some oh big 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 spoiler alerts for this because I'm about to give you some spoilers. Spoiler alerts all over the place and uh, shots fired at Captain Marvel from Marvel. This was a better movie. I, I hear you. Now, don't worry. Oz, Uncle Oz hasn't seen the movie either. Exactly so all these Levi. spoilers that are coming to y'all, he's getting them firsthand too. Um, Superman's in the movie. He's at the very end. I'll just leave you with that. Like I said, big spoiler alerts. Okay. One more. Superman's in it. Um, the entire family all become superheroes. They all inherit some type of power from one of the gods. Um, one of them gets super strength. One gets super speed. One gets the flight. So <clears throat> it's and it's just a just a really good movie. The I think the worst part of the movie, or at least it was Mark Strong. I was not a fan of him. What's he? What's his character? He's the villain. Oh. Um, I just I didn't like like him. As as the villain, um, he plays Doctor Thaddeus Savannah. He's a, he's a really good actor. I just uh, he's okay. He didn't mm-hmm. he didn't do a lot for me. Okay, 
You know? I, well, I, I, from what your reviews are, man, I'm going to go see it. So have you seen Polar yet? No, I still have not seen Polar. Okay, well, I will, I will definitely make sure I see it on Shazam because I don't want to be like you, so it's okay. fine. Well, Shazam, I guarantee Shazam's better than Polar. Probably. The villain, the villain in Polar is not so great, but the action in Polar is really good. I like what they did with the villains. Um, I like how they use them. They're, they're the seven deadly sins yeah. of the villains, and they use them for each person. Each person has to fight a deadly sin, and um, one of the big themes of the movie is envy. Yeah. And it's kind of shown throughout, even throughout the, with the kids, and like I said, family's a big part of this, and um, it's a lot of a, like Shazam is about adoption, obviously, mm-hmm. and there's a lot of adopted kids. The parents are great; like they pick two great actors to be the parents. They seem very likable. You root for them. This is one of the few movies where I was genuinely rooting for characters. I don't do a lot of rooting for characters. Like Avengers, you know, stuff like that. I'll go, you know, get excited for because those are first time things. But this is one of those movies where I genuinely was rooting for the kids, for the characters to like really show up. And when they had their big moments, it was like, wow, that's awesome. That's cool. That's cool. <clears throat> no, it's, it's, it's probably the best DC movie since Man of Steel. So, so DC's trying to get their thing together, dude? DC's two for two in my book. I know a lot of people didn't like Aquaman. I liked Aquaman, but this is, this blows Aquaman out the water. This is way better than Captain Marvel for What's me. What's the next DC, big DC movie, I guess, then? I think it's Birds of Prey. Oof. Okay, well maybe. Well, Suicide Squad, Suicide Squad and Birds of Prey. I think Suicide Squad's coming out later, though. Okay, but I think I think or the Emancipation Proclamation Declaration of Harley Quinn and her three friends. Okay. I don't know if that's the title. It's it should be. That's gonna be horrible. All right. So enough about that. We've we've been rambling on enough. Yes, we have. You know. So let's talk about uh, the big news: uh, Fantastic Four, X Men coming home um what are your thoughts on that like i said man it, um let's see it'll be cool to see like a big matchup dude you're not saying anything what are your thoughts on that the fantasy four and x-men right yep they're coming home and 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 all, all those nice. all those characters with those it's properties it's nice but it was nice to have infinity got the infinity gauntlet with everybody in there as opposed to just the avengers that's what i'm saying it's it's, it's a little too late but also, I, I I fear for the saturation of stuff with all of these people coming under one umbrella. You know, it's gonna. I, I feel the Star Wars effect is like I got them. Let's just start chunking them out. You know, who are you? Who are you most excited to see? I want to see them. I want to see them be able to do whatever they want to do with the X Men properly, for once. And that's and Fantastic Four will actually probably get their due. Maybe actually a thing that's not five foot four. I'm most excited about Doctor Doom. He, I think he, I think he, Doctor Doom could be the next Thanos. He's more than capable of being an overarching villain. Well, Doctor Doom should be should he's easy could fight the he easily could fight the Avengers. That's what I mean. Like he yeah. sh- he should be an overarching villain. He should show up in fan. He should show up in Fantastic Four, and then that should be building towards a big team up because he's agree. more than powerful enough to take on a team. Yeah, because like you know, also you go like, what what happens when <clears throat> Magneto gets a chance to hit, hang out with the Avengers? Like, what is Iron Man? <laughs> yes, what's a, what's this a, is what I'm talking about. What's a shield to that, and what's Iron Man when that comes out? You know what I'm saying? But okay, but here's 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 the counter argument to that. Like what. What does Magneto do against a Hulk? Magneto controls all. Well, it depends on how power, how what Magneto, how powerful they make him. Because this this dude, you know, he's yeah, he, he's got he's he can do some stuff. Well, if they got Magneto like that, that means Scarlet Witch is probably going to be. Well, like hey, that. and here's the thing too. Maybe out of all this craziness, when they consolidate everybody, maybe we can get a true, authentic old man Logan. Instead of Old Man Logan, because I don't, I don't think you can top Logan. I think Logan's an all-time great movie. Just movie. It's one of the top five superhero movies, but as far as just a movie, I think it's a great movie. I want to see House of M. If you're going to do a big X-Men story... That would be great. I want House of M. You could do an alternative... Yeah, that would be alternative. And then if you want your big crossover, I want the Avengers versus X-Men. That would be cool. 
They've done that before. Because then you can introduce the relationship of Black Panther and Storm. Maybe you could already have them be divorced. When you introduce it, yeah. you can play off of that. You can bring the Fantastic Four in with that storyline. Because you're going to change things up anyway. Well, you could really do a Civil War properly and have... Um, well, you, can, Civil you can do Civil War too now. Yeah. You know what I mean? You got, Car- you got Carol Danvers already established. I don't know if Iron Man's going to be the one to die. So... In the next, who do you, so do you think it's Iron Man or Captain America? Oh man, I think it's Cap. Okay. I think they passed the shield. I think that's why we get Sam Wilson and Bucky Barnes in that team up movie on the Disney Plus. Oh god, yeah. I think that's why we're getting that. I think Cap goes. I think Tony Stark kind of becomes like just a becomes the Nick Fury of the next phase of movies. Okay, I think you'll see him pop up here and there. I think we will get a Civil War too. Hmm. With Carol Danvers versus Nick Fury. I don't know if we're going to get Rhodey and Carol Danvers having a relationship. Or is it Sam Wilson and Carol Danvers? It was Rhodey and Carol Danvers. Yeah, I don't think we'll get them two having a relationship. But I think there's a better chance of Sam Wilson and her having a relationship Ooh. in the movies. No. I think I, Or maybe Thor. Yeah, because it, it needs to be like some powerful person. It'd have to be Thor then. Yeah. It'd have to be, which actually, that'd be pretty cool. Um, but yeah, that's so, I mean, that's, those are just some kind of basic ideas. Um, the Eternals is coming out. They're coming out with an Eternals movie. How do you feel about that? Ah, uh, the Eternals are just like, eh, whatever, you know. Um, what are they going to do, dude? I mean, <sighs> what are they going to do as far as what? About plot line story. The Eternals just feels like it's a Greek mythology brought to the Marvel Universe. What about a Shane Chi movie that's going to be in the next? That would be cool though. A yeah. lot of people are saying this could be the billion. This could be a billion dollar movie. Do you think Shane Chi has potential to be a billion dollar movie no. based on the Asian? Oh yeah, if they play Marvel. it off, if they play it off, that's why Black Panther they had um, some like fight scenes in Asia, mm-hmm. you know, the, for that market. But no, um, I think that could be so much. But it, yeah, but I also see that as like that'd be a cool like Netflix miniseries. That it, it'll be what Iron Fist should have been, but but a movie the movie's fine because you know his father is Fu, what Fu Manchu just crazy, um, kind of like did all these experiments on the son and just made him literally the living weapon. Fu Manchu he's called Fu Manchu, the master of of kung fu, the living weapon. I'm the living weapon. No, in your own mind. <laughs> um, so the Fantastic Four. Um, we've seen two iterations of it. Uh, the first generation more, more than enough. First generation had a couple had a sequel, um, which and I don't think the first generation was as bad as people say it was. It was for its time. The second one was as bad as people say it was. Um, a dancing Reed Richard. Okay, that wasn't that great, but um, and a Galactus that no one knew what the fuck was happening. So. Silver Surfer was cool. That was cool. That was cool. Silver Surfer was cool. Um, so I guess my question is, when we because they're going to get rebooted. Are we going to introduce the kids? That would be nice, dude. Or are we just going to stick with the basic four? No, see, they, so what the problem is, they've always done these, like, they, they've done these um, origin stories. Don't do the origin stories with the Fantastic Four anymore. Just do them as older, established heroes and introduce the kids as the kids, as powerful as they are. Now, here's unpopular opinion right here. Oh, you do that a lot. It's good. <laughs> The Fantastic Four movie with Michael B. Jordan, the one with Josh Trank, the one that was critically panned. The actual idea of what he was doing, I was really a fan of. You got these four, they're not kids, but they were like, I guess, well, they weren't kids, but you know, they got these four people and yeah. they get their powers and then the military starts using them and training them. I kind of like the, it's true. I yeah. like the premise of what they were trying to do. I think the execution was bad, and I think that um, you know not, not just the execution, but as far as like some of the acting and some of the stuff like that was pretty bad. But I like the idea of them getting trained by the military, being a part of the military, and the military not really knowing what to do with them. I think the story needed some work, but I kind of like that idea if they wanted to do something different. No, it's great. That, I mean. I liked all that. It's just some of the stuff was just like, uh, oh, the movie weird. sucked. The movie yeah. sucked. 
I, what a way to blow up your career, to blow out your directing career. Oh. Well, I mean, it wasn't. I mean, it didn't hurt Michael B. Jordan too much. Hell no, because he, he's like, yeah. Well, and, and 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 I guess if we've learned anything, if you ever play the Human Torch, you're gonna have an awesome career after you don't play the Human Torch anymore. You know, have we not learned this? I mean, Chris Evans has done like four comic book movies. Yeah, he did the Losers. Yeah, well, yeah, but 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 for but when he was on the on the Marvel tip though, the, the, he did he, Scott Pilgrim. What did he, what was he? He Scott was Pilgrim? like boyfriend number two or something. Oh, that's the I'm talking about like him being a legit like Marvel character. Um, he was he was he was the human. Well, torch. I know he was the Human Torch, but I'm trying to think of what no, else. No, it's not. It's not when you after you play the Human Torch, immediately your career blossoms. So who who would you cast as the next Human Torch? So that they can have a better career after they finish. <laughs> Um, he better not be black. Um, like, yeah. like if you're gonna make, why would you make him black? Like, why this would you? So why would you make him black and make and not and not make and not make Sue black? So like, why wouldn't you just make Sue and Johnny black? Well, you because yeah, <clears throat> you don't want to throw it off too much as he's smart. You're already throwing it no, off. No, 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 no. As, right, a, yeah. as, as, as a smart as a smart executive in Hollywood are because they're not smart. They didn't want to make it too many black people. They wanted to make people feel good about adoption. They didn't want to make they they they're too overly PC and didn't want to make him the. You thing. want a, you want a movie about adoption to make you feel good? Go watch Shazam. They, they didn't want to make they didn't want to make it too PC by making it. They made it too PC by not making him the thing. They didn't want to make it too accurate by making him the smartest man alive and making him Mr. Um, Mr. Fantastic. Sort of like yeah yeah the to, to be fair, he was he was pretty smart. The hot head, well, they're all smart. They're all scientists, but Mr. Fantastic is the smartest one. Like, but so it's like, oh, the hot head, him. It's just stupid. It was dumb. It was dumb. Yeah, I wasn't. I wasn't. I wasn't a fan of that. It is I, like, it's like Green Book. You could have. You could have did a lot if you would have had brother and sister, both black, have an interracial couple with Sue and Reed. You could still do that. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like you could, and you and you would have an interracial couple. Like that's a big step in movies. Yeah, but then that would have gotten uh, more feedback, um, pushback, and stuff too. You think so? They should have just. They should have just made the movie. The no, way it he been. shouldn't have been black. I know that's that. That's what I'm saying. They just wanted to include Michael B. Jordan because he was hot. I know, and they knew that. Was, yeah, yeah, yeah. What? Hey, you, you know, know you know who I would get for the Human Torch? The kid that was in Chronicle with Michael B. Jordan. Not the one that went crazy and killed him, but the other guy. I think he could be a good Human Torch. He's in the he's in a TV show now called Seals. Oh wow! Um, what about um, the dude from Anarchy? Couldn't um, from Sons of Anarchy couldn't be a Human Torch? He has to be the lead all the time. I, I don't know. Uh, is that bad? Charlie Hunnam is a. Uh, is that bad? Yeah, don't 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 disrespect Charlie Hunnam like that. I would. I mean, why not? Um... He should be Green Arrow. He is Oliver Queen. If you wanted a live action Oliver Queen, he's looking at you in the face. He's got the blonde hair. He's got the goatee. He's big enough. Yeah, but he but they don't want him to be looking just like the Sons of Anarchy, so they'd be like, oh, Sons but, of. Oliver but but that's but that's Oliver Queen though to an extent. Like that's old man Oliver, his Sons of Anarchy look. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, no, no, I, I know. I, I, he's no Sons of Anarchy is like kind of middle Oliver, not old man Oliver. Okay, well, middle Oliver, but he yeah. still could pull it off. Yeah, no, no, I hear you. I mean, when he, I mean, he, he, I think the, I don't know. I, I want, I need Charlie in a lead. Maybe the guy who played Quicksilver could be Human Torch. Aaron Taylor. Which Quicksilver? Oh, Aaron Taylor. Okay. The one that's gonna that's potentially in line to play Batman. God, Jesus. God, Whatever. Jesus. Oh man. What about um, X Men? So clearly, you don't want a Wolverine movie. So, what? Give me your five X Men. What lineup would you use in the next iteration? What five X Men would be your core? Movie or just people movie. in the group? Like people um, in the group, like what five though would be your core for the movie? Wolverine. Really? You still want Wolverine? 
You know, well, I do. I, I, I'm a classic X Men dude. I, I'm a cla- I, I was raised on the classic X Men. I understand the new X Men, all this stuff. So if you want to do the new stuff, it, no, 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 no. Because I think Hugh Jackman deserves a cameo in the MCU before it's all said and done. I know people don't like because he's not comic accurate. He is Wolverine. But then, what, then what does he do? So then you never have another Wolverine, or you just. Well, there's the dude, the multiverse. You can have this guy show up to fight Thanos to come fight in the army. Uh, that's too much. Is it too much? Like, why much. is that too much? Too much. I just want an accurate portrayal. Hold on, of hold on. Why is that? Why is that too much? Because it's just like it's. I have huge. I have huge Aspen's fatigue, and so I just want. He hasn't been in a movie in like three years. I have him in fatigue for Wolverine. <laughs> so this is me. I would not. I just don't want to see that anymore. I would want to see a accurate portrayal of Wolverine, and the way you do it is you you play him really kind of like not so good looking, but a brawler. That way, people get that huge act, that huge shit out of their head, and they're just going, "Oh yeah, back to the basics." Wolverine is just like a a loner. Oh, he's a loner who's so good looking. No, he's a loner who knows how to fight and brawl. You know? So it sounds like you're just mad because Hugh Jackman is a good looking guy. No, I just, I'm, I'm just, I hate that they, that they, that they want to, I hate when people try and mold, I hate when people try and mold uh, an image that's already been established into what they want so that they can make you, so they can make it. Hey, look, I done brought his name up a lot, but uh, Jay from Defy Life brought up a good point last week. These movies are are made to make money. So these yeah. decisions are not based upon us. They're calculated. Like, like Hugh Jackman was chosen for a reason. Yeah, every decision is, is a Halle Berry. Every decision is calculated. Like we, you know who was supposed to be Wolverine before Hugh Jackman, right? Who? Russell Crowe. Oh, yeah. See, it's all... It's all. So I, think about if it would have been Russell Crowe instead of Hugh Jackman. Yeah. They, people would have been like, oh, whoa. No, yeah, it, it's... It's all based on demographics. And then, like you just said, they have Halle Berry as Storm. Like, she, would she be your first? I mean, she was fine. She was definitely fine. She was not bad. She did not detract from I like any the, other movies. I like the Storm that was portrayed in first class. You mean in, in the first class series? Oh, okay. Yeah. As a little kid. Yeah. You like the kid? The you young. Know, she's like a kid. No, I like the. I like the. Sorry, I like the. Storm that was in the reboot X Men that had like um, you know there where she's like the renegade one with Cyclops. With she, Cyclops, she's like a kid. No, she's in her twenties, dude. Is she in her twenties? She, she doesn't look like it. She's she's in her twenties. She's a, she's like the young like she's the same age as Cyclops and Jean Grey and all them. Yeah, she was so always, she's like a kid. She's like in like <laughs> she's like in her eighteens, but that's the she's a kid, that, dude. That's a kid. That's the storm that I would like to see. Okay, with the mohawk. You just like the mohawk? No, I I I, I just. That Halle Berry storm was just really Well, you about nice. to see her in the newest uh, the Dark Phoenix movie. I know. And she uses an umbrella when it's raining. I don't, I don't care. <laughs> I don't care. I don't care. <laughs> she shouldn't I, be I using know. an She uh, shouldn't be using an umbrella. Yeah, and Green Arrow shouldn't be on shouldn't been on past season 2, but <laughs> That's not true. Season 3 was season the first half of season 3 until Oliver gets thrown there, off the cliff is excellent. There there are some things There are some things that uh that I don't have answers for, and that was one of them. So on the Flash, Nora Black Light in season seven. Nora Allen just uh, told Barry Allen that she's been working with Ebor Thawne. Nora, the, his daughter. Yeah. Why? <laughs> <laughs> your face. Stupid. Hey, you know what? I have enjoyed recording this show with you to see your facial expressions on some but, of this. But see, <laughs> they keep bringing that dude. Like, so what has she been doing with him? So like. He's been telling her like what to do, like when to go and help people, how to stop this bad guy because he needs to stop him. So I guess Barry can get faster or something, so he can get back home, something like. And that. And then what did Barry say to all this to his? Oh, daughter? Barry locked her up. He didn't say anything to her. He just locked her up. He said, "Are you?" He said, "You you've been working with him." And she was like, "Yeah, I'm sorry, Dad." And she, he went and locked her up. He didn't say nothing to her. What did Iris have to say? Iris didn't get a chance to say nothing. Barry would just Barry like super speeded her into the whatever their little chamber, 
and that was it. Oh my god! I I I, I see. That's the problem when I got out of the. I oh got out oh of the oh! I wish Bees was on the show to tell you this. He he sent us a text. Bane got showed up, and uh, instead of breaking the bat's back, he breaks Jim Gordon's know, back. Spoiler broke, alert! Spoiler alert! He he broke um, Alfred's back. Alfred's back. Yeah. I, I, see, this is why I can't. Because this they they that's why I don't like Gotham because they they just they burnt their wad. So it's like Bruce when. Bruce Wayne needs to actually come on the scene as Batman. It's going to be like, oh. What well, are you going to do? Um, <laughs> what storyline do you even go to yeah, after that? Just, you know, it's just They're like, doing No Man's Land right now. I know. Without He's not even Batman. Here's my thing. If you were, you should have just had Jim Gordon be a Batman, like in the comics, for this storyline until the end when you can introduce the real Batman. You're not calling him Batman anyway. But well, actually, what you should have had introduced alongside with all that—not the Batman person, but a like dark, like a darker character that Bruce Wayne says he's an actually so he can be like, oh, he did this, but this is going to help me do this. Like even kill him off, like you know. I wonder if there was an Azrael. I'm just, I'm just going, man. Gotham is going down a stupid road. I mean, they've already they've done Court of Owls. They've done Bane, Joker, Joker, Catwoman. So the, the no main, man's land. His main villains are going to be um, Mister Freeze. Hugo Strange is still there. Arkham Asylum. Solomon Grundy. God damn! <laughs> <laughs> I think I think they did the Mad Hatter. Oh, they have, they've done all that stuff. Man. It's so crazy. They're going to go, okay, Crocodile and Scarecrow, Raz Al Ghul. Mm-hmm. Because Barbara, Gordon, oh Barbara Gordon's about to be born, so so Barbara is a legit infant when Bruce is becoming Batman. Yeah. So that adds more context to Batman having sex with Barbara Gordon. Yeah, yeah, because that means that he that sh- at least he's been in the game for eighteen years before. <laughs> oh my god. I can't, I can't even talk this is why story. this is why I can only do Gotham. I, I got through season one because they had Fish Mooney. It was a complete original. Oh, well, most of it oh, was an original story. Season one was pretty cool. That's the one V's gave a four point five. Yeah, I would have gave it like a five. Vixen. All those like you know the yeah. Fox. All those characters you know. I don't know about Vixen. I don't think. Well, her name was Fox or something. No, like her that. name was Fish Mooney. Oh, her. They, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I thought she had an alias or something. Uh, maybe, maybe. I just okay. I remember as Fish Mooney, but maybe. You know, all that, but now it's just kind of... I mean, it, I'm going to watch the episode with Batman, though. I just want to see, like, where they go with it. Yeah, it's terrible. Broke Alfred's back. Oh, okay, I'm with it. I mean, Alfred has been fighting the whole season, so I guess it's about time for something to happen. To so maybe, that's, <clears throat> maybe that's when he's going to actually become a butler. So, so crazy. That might be true. Actually, that might be true. That's why they're going to be like, oh, I'm, just, I'm, I'm not fighting anymore. I'm just going to be a servant. That's so crazy, dude. Yeah, that, that might... That might be true. I'm surprised they haven't introduced like a Dick Grayson or a Jason Todd or somebody like that as like a sidekick. Well, and so they can't even introduce them yet because Dick Grayson is younger than Barbara Gordon. Yeah, but that's in continuity. In this, you know, in this, maybe Dick Grayson's like a cop. Dick Grayson or is going to be an old Dick Grayson who comes back to young Bruce in the future. No, Dick Grayson's probably going to become Batman. God, <laughs> Dick Grayson's father was Batman. And it didn't go well. See, in the last episode, Alfred's going to be like, there was a man named Dick Grayson who showed me the way of a bat. Thomas Grayson. <laughs> Wait. <laughs> you're, you and my father have the same first name. Yeah. So they stop fighting. Silly. Oh, man. Well, I don't know how we got on Gotham from, uh, from the Marvel merger. It's been a good little tangent, so. <clears throat> I don't think anybody took any showers, though. Hey, I, I need to take a shower. So. You do need to take a shower. This is, I told you this was a bad idea, dude. You've been stinking the whole time. And the You've been beer, talking a bunch of nonsense. And the beer, the beer is wearing off, too. <laughs> so. All right. Uh, last couple questions about the, the Marvel merger. Um, what storyline specifically do you want to see adapted now that we have pretty much any character? A what? true Infinity Gauntlet. A true Infinity Gauntlet. A true... One that actually can happen. Because we're not going to go back. Like, they're not going to reboot anything. Oh, well, then all they got to do is just do the, um, the ski... The, the skull. Ski me. Ski me. Shout out to the AKs. Um, <laughs> all right. Um, that they, they, they can do a true... They can do a true... Key, ski me. 
he and Skull War that has all the superheroes in it. Crack that joint again. Ski! So. <laughs> so. They could do a true um, Skull and... Um, scroll. They could do a true... Scroll. A true Cree. Cree and Scroll and War. Scroll War. Well, they say that Captain Marvel sets up the secret wars. There's a line in Captain Marvel where Samuel Jackson, where she asked Samuel Jackson, how do I know you're not a scroll? And he says, I always cut my toast on the corners. So it's always, it's never like flat. I yeah. think. Well, in the age of Ultron, no. In Civil, in Captain America Winter Soldier, when he's on the run and he's eating his bread, it's not cut. Hmm. Is he a scroll? The plot thing. Kevin Feige has come out and said that um, the scrolls have kind of been set up already. Oh, I'm sure they're in there. So, do you think he's a scroll? No, because he vanished. He he. Why would he? Why Why wouldn't he vanish? The scrolls vanish too. It's half of the. It's half of of the population. Got you. So let's just slow roll. You slow it. Why would he be a scroll when he contacts her? But you haven't seen Captain Marvel. But he contacts her before he vanishes. Why would he do that? Because the scrolls are good guys. Hmm. The scrolls are are here in peace. Hmm. Like there's they're not bad guys at all. Okay. And 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 the, I mean you they set them up to be, but they are really just looking for a home. Yeah, because their home world was destroyed. Yeah. Yeah. By the Kree. Their home world was they have been back and forth, good and bad. The fight has been forever. Their homeworld was actually destroyed, I thought, by Galactus in the book. Well, maybe in the book. I'm talking about the... In the and, okay, so the Kree destroyed their homeworld. Or maybe it might not have been... It might have been Ronan, the accuser. Oh, okay. But he's a Kree, right? He is a Kree. Oh, so... Then, so the Kree are known to be the bad guys. Yeah. Pretty much. Experiment on a bunch of Earth. Until city. Captain Marvel. It's like, yo, I'm, I'm fixing this. Yo, I'm, 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 I'm going I'm to stop you myself. Okay. I mean, like I said, there are some good moments in Captain Marvel. When she beats the army by herself, it almost got to the point of being like, okay, it's a bit much, but it was really cool. Okay. So that was okay. It's not as cool as Shazam's final act, though. I, 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 I look forward to seeing both. Maybe today. All right, so that's, so that's what you want. You want a Korean scroll. Yeah, you want, a se- you want the Secret Wars. I want, oh, I, 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 you could do a real Secret War and put the Beyonder in there, too. That's easy to do. That's easy to do. We got the technology for it, and that'd be a, and well. We got the Eternals fix. coming out, and a lot of people are saying that Galactus is going to be the big bad that comes out of Avengers Endgame. I know people are saying that, but I want to see what form of Galactus they're going to do. So, okay, um, me, I, I already said I want House of M. I House of M would be awesome. Or Age I, of Apocalypse, House of M. Age of Apocalypse, House of M would be cool too. Yeah, I, or a, just Age of Apocalypse, like a, a good Age of Apocalypse, yeah. a, r- done right. I think that would be cool. Apocalypse needs to be a monster. Yeah. A towering figure. All right. Let's, uh, let's get into our final blows. Uh, Oz, what you got for the final blow? What? The final blow? I, I, know, I know we're like 15 minutes past because you, know, you need to I, go I, skating and stuff because you're we're a real do, nerd. I thought we were going to do like a, like, like a two-hour show of me just giving a monologue about something. I was going to be the origin of Captain Marvel. Um, my final blow is that this. That was supposed to be last week, but we got oh, it. We had beef. Yeah. We had a two and a half hour show last week and we only talked about Captain Marvel for like 20 minutes. Um, my final blow is going to be, hold on, I, I, gotta, I gotta get the right word. Um, there's a show on Netflix, shout out to Netflix. Um, Triple Frontier, Charlie Hunnam. Um, did, you, did you watch that? No, I'm, I'm going to watch it though. I'm going to watch it. What, what, what makes you want to watch that show? It's got a lot of actors I like. Like I like Ben Affleck. I like Charlie. I, like I'm a big Charlie Hunnam fan. Like I, I am. A, you, I mean, you stick with that dude, even though he makes some crazy voodoo. Like, like I'm sorry, I made the biggest mistake. I was really tired. I wasn't in the right frame of mind, and I watched Arthur King Arthur. Terrible. And that was a that was the longest music video I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> That's a great way of putting it. It was the most, but it did have some like it. There were some cool action scenes. In it, it. It, it was bad movie though. It was the longest. I mean, the, it was. Uh, but that's not his fault. That's Guy Ritchie. Uh, Charlie, you and your agent need to talk. It's it, you need to make some more. You need to make some more big boy decisions. Okay, yo, um, 
get a new agent, dude, because you can do better. I'm gonna watch Triple Frontier though. It's just one of those things where like I spent, I got so invested in Sons of Anarchy, the TV show, and I just thought he he. I like that show, man. Like, I know a lot of people don't like it because it's got some but racist was, elements to it. I know, but it was weird in King Arthur when... at the, at the, <laughs> at the King at, Arthur? The, it was, no, it was just weird at the end of King Arthur when he's riding on the horse and he lifts both his hands up and runs into a... Um, uh, <laughs> a a, 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 red, a red-winged tree. Because he, he had finished all the work he needed to do and gave his... And gave, he, he had set up Lancelot and the... Uh, and the and the round table up, so he just re- come on, man. But he's been in some good movies. And, let me, and, let me, and one more thing, hey yo, Sons of Anarchy dudes, how you gonna put? How you gonna put? Definitely didn't mean to hit the spoiler. I know, dude. I meant to hit shots fired. Shots fired. And Charlie Hunnam, shots fired. My bad, wrong one. How, how you going to put that much pain and suffering and trauma on the truck driver when it wasn't even his fault, bro? He he was doing a long haul, trying to go to Walmart, give us our goods that we need, and he and he, he hits a motorcycle dude who has his hands out. You know what you did? You messed that dude up for the rest of his life, man. Why don't you just go off a cliff? No one else is no one else is implicated in this. That was and the guy who was driving the truck was the main was the lead actor from the show The Shield, which was also by Kurt Sutter. Okay, see, okay, see. <laughs> you got you got the guy you got the dude from the commission. <laughs> Driving a truck, hitting that dude. Come on, man. With come his on. arms out like come this. On, dude. With a whole horde of cops behind him. Yeah, chasing. man. You got O.J. Simpson on a motorcycle <laughs> with his hands out, dude. Come on, bro. We can do better, son. Hey, look. So, here's some of the good movies he's been in. The good movies. Children of Men. That's a good movie. Pacific Rim. That's a good yeah, movie. Yeah, yeah, that's fine. Lost City Z. That's a good movie. Crimson Peak. It's not a good movie. No. Author. Music video. Awesome. <laughs> but Triple, Triple Frontier's got him, Ben Affleck, Oscar Isaac, Gerald Hedlund, Pedro What's it Pascal. About, though, bro? It's about these like off the grid renegades who like do stuff the cops can't do and they rob people. Oh, so it's like Batman and the Sons again. It's pretty much Batman. Okay. Like he's pretty much Bruce Wayne without the suit. Oh, okay, cool. I'm, I, I'll watch it for Netflix. Now, here, here's my final blow. I'm yeah, real quick. I forgot about the final blow. Final movie. blow. If you're not watching Love, Death, and Rockets, I'm sorry, Love, Death, and Robots on Netflix, it's something wrong with you. It's about 12 shorts, and they're from anywhere from 8 minutes to 12 minutes long. They range from comedies to um, sci-fi nerdism. Each one is a different artists doing it and each one is a different story and man I'm gonna tell you Shapeshifters has been rocking my world terribly dude that's my final blow uh, my final blow is um, shout out to everyone we mentioned on the show definitely go check out all their shows um, you know we're, this is episode 23 we're um, we're getting up there hey hey, sh- hey tell, tell a friend we're trying to hit that we're trying to hit that 2000 mark by the end of uh, April well, that's not happening. But uh, such negativity, dude. Come on. My final blow is just shout out to all the listeners. We appreciate y'all. Um, you know, shout out to Fi Life. Go to Fi Life. Oz, how do you defy life? I defy life by being on this podcast and doing what I love to do. Um, as for the comic book preacher and the TV show preacher, uh, when Jesse Cl- when Jesse Cluster's father told him uh, about life he said you gotta be one of the good ones Jesse said why his father said cause there are too many of the bad ones out there great um, that was deep dude okay okay round of applause for you <laughs> alright great back to my final blow you didn't give them monologue on your final blow but you want to give it on my final okay, blow okay okay alright okay, alright great, great. Here we go. Um, shout out to uh, Love, Death, and Robots. Never heard of it, but I, I'll go watch that. Won't be watching Polar. But hey, I, after we finish this, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get regular Scott for 12 minutes to watch one episode and watch the review. I need to post this show. Actually, I'm going to get him to watch Polar, but he doesn't know yet. Actually, I'm gonna get him. Actually, I'm gonna get him to watch <laughs> the first fifteen minutes, the opening fifteen minutes of the Killing Joke, so he can be fully disgusted for the rest of the day. 
All right, that's my final blow. That's all I got. <laughs> that's all I got. All right, great. Like I said, follow us on Twitter, knee for marvel vs DC. That's the number four. Email us. We'll read them on the show at knee for marvel vs DC at gmail.com. You can find us on Instagram, Facebook, go to fightlife.com, uh, iTunes, Spreaker, anywhere you download your podcast. Like, subscribe, give us a review, give us five stars. Uh, tell everyone we'll talk to them next time. Um, everybody, as usual, peace and chicken grease. Y'all have a good time because we're going to have a good time until we talk to y'all next time. Peace. Yes. Don't do my peace. That's my peace. I'm saying you. Ski with. <laughs>